In this video, we're going to take a look at another example of working with vectors and determining if they are linearly independent or linearly dependent. So again, we're going to consider the vectors 2, negative 4, 5, 3, 2, negative 4. And this final vector, though, you'll notice has a variable, a negative 1, a negative 6, alpha. So alpha is a variable in this final vector. And what we're going to do is we're going to find a, sp a particular value of alpha that forces the vectors to be linearly dependent. So we know what it means for vectors to be linearly dependent. It means that the linear combination of them equals the all zero vector. The only solution for them to be independent is the trivial case. So if there is more than one solution, more than just the trivial solution, then they are linearly dependent. So we can figure out the value of alpha that forces these equations or these vectors to be dependent by forming an augmented matrix, a homogeneous system of equations, so the right side of the equation is equal to all zeros. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this system of equations and figure out the value of alpha that gives a family of solutions, a whole infinite set of solutions. So if I do some Row operations, let equation 2 equal equation 2 plus 2 times e1, and equation 3 equal equation 3 minus 2 and a half e1. I can get this next augmented matrix, so I've forced zeros here in this first element. Notice since we have a variable here, as I add things to it, I have terms like alpha plus 2.5 here that I have to carry along, so that looks a little different than normal, but it's fine. This is still just a value, alpha plus 2.5. So I have zeros in these first rows right here. For the next row operation, if we let E3 equal E3 plus 11.5 over 8 times E2, I'm basically multiplying this by 11.5 over 8 to cancel the 8s and get an 11.5. So when I add it to this, a negative 11.5, I get a 0 there. So if we do that, equation 1 stays unchanged because I'm not changing it. Equation 2 stays unchanged because I'm not changing it. Equation 3, I end up getting a 0 there. And then this actually works out nicely. As I add a negative 8 times 11.5 over 8, the 8s cancel, and I get a negative 11.5, which when added to 2.5 gives me the value a negative 9. So that's why that is alpha minus 9 there in that third row. And if we look at this third row, something interesting has happened. I have zeros everywhere except for alpha 0.9 or alpha minus 9. So look what happens. If I was to have alpha equals to 9, then I would have a row of all zeros. We know what happens when we end up having a row of all zeros. We end up with a solution to our system of linear equations that has a free variable. So if I have a row of all zeros here, I'm going to end up with x3 as a free variable. And that means that I'm ha going to have this infinite number of solutions to my system of equations, not just a trivial solution. If I got just a trivial solution, then the vectors would be linearly independent. I have found the value of alpha that gives me an infinite number of solutions, so that means I can make these vectors be dependent. So since I have not just a trivial solution, this means that the vectors are linearly dependent. So I have found alpha equals 9 is the value of alpha that makes them be linearly dependent. Let's think about that just a little bit. Let's check. When alpha is 9, here are the set of vectors that we have. The first two vectors are what they are, but if I substitute alpha equals 9, the third vector is now a negative 1, a negative 6, 9. It's pretty easy to see that these are definitely linearly dependent vectors, because look what I can do. If I have the final vector, a negative 1, a negative 6, a negative, a negative 1, a negative 6, 9. So that's a negative 1 there, sorry. That should have uh, been a negative 1 to start. We can see that we can write that as equal to the second vector, 3, 2, negative 4, minus the first vector, 2, negative 4, 5, right? 3 minus 2 is 1, 2, so oops, I actually wrote those down backwards, I should have written it the other way around, my difference was incorrect. We can see that the vector in negative 1 and negative 6, 9 is equal to the first vector, 2, negative 4, 5 minus the first vector, 3, 2, negative 4, because look, 2 minus 3 is a negative 1, and negative 4 minus 2 is a negative 6, and 5 minus a negative 4 is 9. So I can write one of these vectors, the third one, 
as a linear combination of the other two vectors. So that means the third vector, when alpha equals 9, is linearly dependent on the other two vectors because that's what it means to be linearly dependent. You can write it as a linear combination of the other things. So that wraps up this example. Sorry for the little uh, typo here, writing that difference backwards at first. But what we've done is we've solved for the particular value of alpha that forced our augmented matrix to have a family of solutions, which means that these vectors are linearly dependent.